Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this particular playlist, we'll be discussing about Python tutorial. We'll, we'll be understanding how Python programming is done because Python is very much necessary for the machine learning for the for the for the deep learning programming uh, stuff. So algorithms uh, that we need to implement, we need to know the basic uh, libraries that we basically use for implementing machine learning algorithms and for doing the exploratory data analysis. So in this particular playlist, we'll be discussing completely about Python programming language. We'll try to understand the different types of uh, libraries. We'll try to understand how we can work with NumPy in order to uh, work with arrays. We'll try to understand how to read different kinds of sources with the help of Pandas library. And we'll also understand some of the basic data structures that are commonly used in Python like list, dictionary, tuples, sets and many more things. So to begin with, first of all, as I'm going to start this from a uh, fresh like you I'm, I'm basically starting it from the basic so first of all we need to know how to install uh, the anaconda environment uh, which is basically we are going to work with the version of python 3.7 which is the recent version so to begin with uh, in order to install anaconda you just go and open a new uh, window so and you just type anaconda downloads okay do that uh, you will be able to see the first link over here just click over here anaconda python or r and after this just go to the download section once you go to the download section if you scroll down all the versions of python will be available over here so even you have mac os installer linux installer windows installer since currently i'm working in win uh, windows first of all you have to download the 3.7 version okay uh, Again, there are other versions of Python 2.7, which is the recent uh, most stable version, but uh, we'll try to work in 3.7. And as you know that within one or two months, uh, uh, you know, the Python support team will be stopped supporting for Python 2.7 version. So guys, if you have any application in 2.7, it is time that you move it to a higher version. So once you download it, I've already installed the Anaconda environment. Make sure after you download this exe file, what you have to do is that you just have to select all the checkbox that that comes on your way while installing this particular installer right so once you do that uh, after the installation is done you know the main thing is that how we can basically uh, run or in uh, how we can basically trigger the jupyter notebook uh, spider id and try to do the execution part okay so for that what i have to do is that after the installation is done you just go and click on the windows section and you'll be seeing something called as anaconda prompt now what you have to do is that from any folder from any folder that you basically have to run right by default if you go and type jupyter notebook right so over here you just type jupyter notebook this will in short uh, open the jupyter notebook tool uh, from the default uh, path where you have actually installed the anaconda but some of the times you will be storing your files or jupyter notebooks in different different drives right so in order to do that suppose i have stored in my d drive right i'll just go inside my d drive and i'll just write a jupyter notebook or uh, let me just show you one more example where i am actually uh, completely storing everything inside this particular path so as, as soon as i hit this cd and this particular part is there over there and after this if i write jupyter notebook this will in short uh, you know trigger the jupyter notebook uh, tool and you will be able to see your path which looks something like this okay so localhost it will just get opened in your default browser these are all the things that we are basically planning to do so from here i will be going over here and explaining you of the basics of python and then similarly we'll be continuing the videos and understanding the other stuffs in python that necessary to become a data scientist and this tutorial is focused on becoming an industrial expert data scientist guys so um, the python will be having many videos after this uh, i'll be i'll be discussing about numpy pandas and later on we'll be discussing about functions we'll be discussing about exceptional handling classes objects and many more things so make sure you practice this well and the main key in order to learn python is that you have to practice. once you get this what you have to do is that you can basically start your coding part and here it is so we'll understand the basics of python today i hope you are pretty much clear with the installation path and it is pretty much simple i hope so what what we have to do is that in this particular video we'll be discussing about the various data types in python variable variable assignment print formatting okay now always remember guys whenever you are learning anything new 
uh, with respect to Python or is with respect to exploratory data analysis, try to uh, do that particular work in Jupyter Notebook. Why I am saying you is that Jupyter Notebook is quite interactive, you know, so it is very much interactive. It is very much good. You will be able to see the syntax. You will be able to see all the parameters that are required over here. So let us go and see what all things we'll be discussing over here. As I said that we'll be discussing various data types in Python, variables, variable assignment, print formatting. So as to begin with, uh, there are various data types. As you know, if you have any idea about other programming languages, you have data types like integer, float, you know and you have double different different long values and all but here by default you will be having three basic data types that you will most probably be looking at okay one is strings numbers floating values and all so let me just show you how you can basically uh, execute code over here so if you are very much new to python all you have to do is that by default whenever you open any notebook file right you will be getting this kind of console application. Jupyter Notebook is in short is an interactive console application. This, this particular thing is basically called as a cell where you can execute your programs. Okay. So I'll just make a cell and show it to you. Suppose, and this cell is very much interactive guys. You can also write topics over here. You can, you can basically write a code over here and you can also write different types of comment sections over here. Okay. One, uh, first of all, I'll just go with the comment section in order to write comment section. You just have to put hash and you can basically write whatever comment you want. The other way is that you can also write multiple line comments, which looks like this. Hello, my name is Krish. This is basically my comment section. Now in order to execute this, in order to execute this, okay. Uh, so in, um, is your cell in short and suppose you want to write some description in order to write some description suppose you want to use some headings right so in uh, why you want to use heading over here what you have to do is that you have to go and see over here there is something called as code markdown nb convert and heading okay suppose i select markdown and i i just write a single hash and i write uh, so this is my python tutorial right so this becomes a heading okay after that you want to use a heading which is quite smaller than this one so what you can do is that you just have to use double hash and make sure you have a space in between and uh, i'll just write welcome to python tutorial so this is just some of the things some of the basic things i know you know that but it is always good that we start from something basics uh, but again as we go ahead we'll be discussing a lot of things okay? now after that you can also uh, use different types of uh, formatting within this particular cell box let me just show you so here you go, you just would write something like dash, like suppose today we'll be discussing about data types. So let me just write it down. So this is data types. If I execute it, you can see that it has become uh, in this particular symbol. Let me just show you some of the fields that you can see over here. Here is basically your file option. You can open a notebook, you can make a copy, you can save as, you can rename as, you can also create a checkpoint. Okay. Uh, the other thing is edit. So anytime you basically have to create a cells, what you can do is that you can just press. There are two ways. One is through directly clicking on edit, you know, and you can basically see, okay, it's not in edit actually. Okay. So you can basically delete cells. You can merge cell above. You can combine this, but if you go to view or insert, right in insert cell above, when you do you'll, a cell will get created. If you want to do it just by using some, uh, you know some some shortcuts and you can press escape over here and you can just uh, press a okay escape plus a so automatically the cells will also get created okay. so this is uh, this is what uh, is the basic functionality and always remember guys uh, as you know that for every programming language you require a compiler so this kernel is basically a compiler kind of stuff Always remember whenever you open a, you start a Jupyter notebook, a compiler will always be created and that is named as kernel over here. So always remember, suppose your, uh, your, your, your Jupyter notebook gets stuck. It is not working properly. Just go and restart the kernel. Okay. You just restart or clear output automatically your, uh, your kernel will get restarted. So let us go ahead and try to understand what is this data type. Now, always remember guys. In, in Python, see the Python, uh, why Python is very, very easy is that because the syntax is pretty much simple. You can write it down. The compiler will basically give you a very good explanation about the error that you are basically facing. So these are some of the examples you can see over here. I've written one plus one is equal to two, four plus five is equal to 
20, 4 multiplied by 5 is equal to 4, 20, 2 multiplied by 10 is equal to 20, and 10 divided by 2 is 5, 10 modulus 2 is 0. So all the mathematical operation can be done. This you can just guess and let me know what exactly is this. It is this is in short is nothing but 10 to the power of 2. Now when and always remember guys since uh, this is just integers if I create a string okay if I create a string something like this 10 cross right so what will happen if I apply some mathematical operations on a string in short this is getting you know multiplied by 10 times and that is getting displayed so many times okay so these are some of the things that you have to uh, see that suppose you are trying to multiply and if there is one data type of string then definitely there will be some changes in the output okay so this was the simplest example now we have one inbuilt function okay python has a lot of inbuilt function some of the inbuilt function is something called as type okay if you want to check the data type of any values right you can basically use this type function give the value inside this and you will be getting the type of the data type of this particular variable or the value that is present so i have written type of one one is basically my integer suppose i write 10.0 if you i see then this is basically my float if i write type of hello which is just my string again i'll discuss about string how to define a string and all this is basically str okay. now similarly if i write type of true okay so python has some inbuilt uh uh, keywords you know reserved keywords like true false and uh, they are something like int float these are all reserved keywords that are present inside python so if i write type of true you can see that it is basically a boolean value okay so this is pretty much simple i hope you understood how to check the data type you can basically use type for that and after that let us move towards strings now strings can be defined by either uh, double enclosed uh, quotes or it can also be uh, defined between a single enclosed quotes okay so this is one way this is the another way but if i just try to see any way it is basically going to give the type as string pretty much simple so let me just show you in the form of double quotes also that's it it is showing us a string now the main important thing that you need to understand is about variable assignment now guys always remember the variable assignment is basically given by a syntax which is my variable name and the value and one thing one best thing about the compiler of python is that remember in other programming languages we have to give something like int a is equal to 10 suppose you are writing the program in .NET Java or something at that time we used to write like this but in python you don't have to write that you just can write a is equal to 10 the compiler will automatically understand what value this is okay whether it is an integer flow and based on that the data type will be set for this particular variable so once i execute it and if i see type of a it is basically an integer and a variable can also be assigned a string it can be assigned different different data structures which we'll be discussing as we go ahead so here i've defined something like krish nayak you can see and if i'm executing type of a this is basically string now with the help of variable assignment i can also perform different types of mathematical operations so here I have a is equal to 10, b is equal to 20. Okay, And suppose if I write print a multiplied by b. Print is basically to display it in your output console. a divided by b, a percentile b. And again, we can also write complex mathematical operations like you see over here with the help of brackets and you are simultaneously applying uh, you know, division, multiplication. And this follows a Bodmus rule. I hope everybody remembers Bodmus rule because everybody i think they may have studied this in your school days b is for bracket o is for off d is for division multiplication addition and subtraction this is the precedence that is basically given okay. so this is some of the mathematical oper operations and more complex operations can be done um, when we'll be learning about numpy pandas different types of more complex operations will be coming ahead okay. now the next way is that how to make how to print variables or different types of statement so for that we have already seen print statement and guys whenever you have some inbuilt method okay make sure that if you want to see what this inbuilt method basically does right you just before the bracket you just press shift tab and here is all the values that you'll be getting okay Again, i'm telling you before the bracket press shift tab automatically you'll be getting all the details of this function so i'm saying you that jupyter notebook whenever you're learning for the initial time make sure that you do everything in the jupyter notebook because you'll be able to learn a lot of things you'll be getting all the informations regarding it okay so this is 
that will basically be helping you to get all the information over here so when i write print hello okay this is some i'm just writing some statement inside this and it is printing now suppose i want some dynamic way of printing some very complex uh, sentences how can i do this now see i have created two variables one is first name and one is last name in the first name i have krish in the last name i have nayak right so over here i can write like my first name is i'm opening and closing an empty parenthesis and the last name is empty parenthesis and then i use a dot format okay inside this dot format i'll give my two variables one is first underscore name and last underscore name now the position that i have given inside this format function will get replaced in this brackets in that way only in that order only okay so here you can see that after i execute this two line you can see my first name is krish it is getting replaced by this particular brackets and my last name is basically nayak okay so it is getting replaced and this is a very good way of printing any complex statement that you want now always remember guys if i convert if i change the order of this particular statement then what will happen can anybody guess it is going to repair get converted with respect to the brackets so this ordering is very very important that you need to understand but again uh, what if what if i don't have to worry the ordering about this okay so what i can do is that inside this brackets i will assign some spaces like first and last and inside this format i'll just say first is equal to first name last is equal to last name so any order that i give suppose i am trying to give in this particular order first i'll just give my last okay now what will happen just see this okay i'm going to put the brackets over here and once i execute it even though i have changed the order because of this particular placeholder it is not getting changed okay? and this is how it is basically executed you can see that but still my statement is almost same now, this was the basics of python guys i hope you know about the installation part i hope it is and currently we are doing with python 3.7 okay this is very much important to understand because it is the newest version it is always better we try to learn it from the newest version okay now let us go and see some of the more inbuilt functions suppose i write length length is an inbuilt function in python and if i write crush now you can see that as soon as i gave a string inside this length function okay then i'm basically getting the length of this particular uh, string that i have it is basically counting the characters okay and so the output is over here as 5 apart from this i have already explained you about type type actually helps us to give the data type suppose i write something like this 1.0 it is basically going to give me the float if i write strings crush nayak it is string suppose i write a list i know we have still not discussed a list but just understand that list is a collection of items so and it can it need not be the same data type items it can be anything okay now here you can see that it is showing is a list we'll still discussing about list and all the different things uh, that we have basically discussed till here okay now this was all about this particular videos guys we'll continue this tutorial in our second tutorial uh, but understand that in this particular tutorial we understood how to install the anaconda um, you know anaconda tool and in the anaconda tool you have different different tools like jupyter notebook you have spider you have r studio you have uh, vs code also make sure that while you're installing the anaconda you check all the boxes and then and this particular code will also be given in the github which you can basically retrieve it and you can basically start working on it and this is just the basics this is just the starting guys okay so i hope you like this particular video uh, i'll come up with the next video thank you one and all I'll see you all in the next video thank you